Hi, Rabbi. Hey, how you doing? Good. I'm Lee Schwimmer. I um, came for the first time to the shul to hear Gil Hoffman, and we just were really, um, well, of course, we enjoyed hearing him, but the people at your shul are so nice, and, you know, right. they say in a, in, a, in, a, in a corporation that, you know, a fish rots from the head down. Well, I right. think, you know, in a synagogue, it blossoms from the head down. Thank you. Thank you. I'm humbled. So, um, so I uh, I just want to spend some time getting to know you guys and thank you with you and listening to you. And you have a beautiful voice. So thanks for the warm welcome into your community and for, what you're, for what you're creating. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to learn uh, the book of Joshua today. Uh, we started uh, two weeks ago. Um, I'll do a quick review on the third chapter. Hopefully we can cover chapters three and four today. I'll just wait another uh, second for people to log in. Last week we had a technical uh, difficulty. So I'll do a quick review. Shmuel, what is Nice to see y'all. Okay. All right. Good evening, everybody. Uh, we'll continue with our journey uh, to the book of Joshua. Um, I'm going to share my screen so everybody can see. Okay. Mm. All right. Okay, so I'll I'll do a quick um um review also of uh, last week. Uh so no one is gonna be missing any uh, material. Um so we are in chapter three, Peregimel. Um previously we saw that uh Bnei Israel are, are camped by the Jordan River. And Yoshua commands them the three days to prepare themselves as they're going to cross the Jordan River and actually move into the land of Israel. Uh, next morning, uh, Joshua, all the Israelites from Shittim, and they travel to the Jordan and they spend the night there. It's a very short travel. So that's the three days we've learned about them before. Uh, three days later, the officials went through the camp. And those are the three days that we saw in chapter one. They have those three days to prepare. Um, when you will see the Aaron of Hashem uh, carried by the Kohanim, you will travel after the Aaron, but you'll put a distance between you and the Holy Ark, Alpaim Ama, it's a kilometer, it's 1.2 kilometers. Altikrevu uh, Elav, okay, don't get close to the Aaron, so there is a, there is a distance, it's a, uh, it's a pretty big distance, as a matter of fact, between the people and the Ark. And soon we'll understand also what's the, what's the point of doing that. Prepare yourselves. Hashem will show you wonders tomorrow. You will carry the ark and pass in front of the people. Today I will make you great. Hashem have promised Joshua at chapter 1, I'll make you great just like I did for Moshe, I'll do to you. And Hashem tells them that's going to happen today. That's the 13th. That's the... 
ואתה תצווה את הכהנים נושאי ארון הברית לאמור כבואכם על צמא הירדן ואתם תעמודו. You will command the Kohanim, hey guys, you're going to get to the Jordan River and you're going to stand, you're going to touch the water and stand. ויום יהושע בני ישראל גשו הנה, come close, ושימו את דברי אדוני אלוהיכם, hear the words of Hashem אלוהיכם, of Hashem your God. ויום יהושע, and יהושע said, בזאת תדון, כי אל חי בקרבכם. אל חי, the living God is among you. אל חי is a new expression. Later on, the words of the Navi will call us Bnei El Chai, the sons of the living God. And that's a new expression that Yeshua brings, this new concept. The living God. And he will drive the, 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 the other nations that are living in the land of Canaan, they, uh, they will be defeated in front of you. In Aaron HaBrit Adon Kol HaAretz Avon Ifnechem Bayarden. Behold, the Ark of the Covenant אדון כל הארץ. Again, we have a unique expression here, אדון כל הארץ. אוקיי, אדון כל הארץ, the master of the earth, the master of all the earth, is crossing the Jordan in front of you. Now appoint 12 people, one person per tribe, and when the Kohanim, when their feet will touch the water, מאה ירדני קרטון, המים היורדים מלמעלה, so the Jordan River flows from north to south, so the water coming from the north side, they will stop and the water will pile up. ואי בנסוע מעולם לעבור את הירדן והכוהנים נוסע על הברית לפני העם. And indeed, when the Kohanim got with the, uh, with, the, with the Holy Ark to the Jordan, and they touched the, the waters, והירדן מלא על כל גדותיו כל ימי קציר. We have here an interesting fact. The Jordan is, the Jordan, uh, is overflowing with water. This is the days of the harvest. Okay, this is Pesach. It's time of the, the, the snow, uh, you know, from all the Golan Heights, um, the mountains. The mountains in the north are, the, the snow is defrosting and, and melts and turns into water, and the Jordan is full of water. Now, um, the, the Tanakh is giving us location. So the Jordan River, we crossed across the, in front of Jericho, the city of Jericho, which is north of the Dead Sea. Now, you see, if you want to cross the Jordan River, there are many locations you can cross. The, the Jordan River has a place, places that, it, that it's a very narrow river. Obviously, as we can all understand, the point where the river connects to the sea, that will be the widest point of the river. Okay, that's the, the delta of the river starting to open up. Um, you know, you can find places in the, uh, you know, closer to the uh, north of Israel. If you go north in the Jordan Valley, well, there are places that the Jordan River is super narrow. That uh, the ancient bridges, Ma'abarot uh, Ayarden, mentioned in the Tanakh uh, many times in, in the book of uh, Judges, in the book of Samuel. Uh, those were bridges that were, uh, that were crossing points over the river. It wasn't hard to build a bridge. Over the Jordan River, uh, you know, it's not the uh, San Francisco Bridge, and um, so there are places that will be much easier to cross the Jordan River. But it seems like that we are crossing it in one of the toughest points uh, to cross. The uh, um, especially when the Jordan is, is 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 overflowing with water, you can imagine the water, um, you know, in the connection point a little bit before that connection point. To the Yamamelach, to the uh, to the Dead Sea, to the Sea of the Arava, that's not that won't be uh, naturally that won't be the uh, the best point to cross. Vayamdu a Kohanim no se arol b'tadone b'charava b'toch ha'yarden. Achen v'chol Yisrael ovrim b'charava d'shatam u'kol agol la'avor et ha'yarden. And the Kohanim that carrying the ark, they're standing in the dry water. The water are piling up. Now the Talmud. 
and again, the, it, it's a, it's a, um, it's definitely a skill. One of the necessary skills of learning Tanakh, um, just like learning Torah, you learn the Torah Shabichtav with the Torah Shabal Pe. Okay, our sages and their wisdom, they carry the tradition, and they tell you, hey, what's happening behind the scenes, or the pasuk might be uh, giving you a little bit of information or a lot of information is hidden in one or two words or in a unique expression. And, and that's the, that's a general skill that you learn the written Torah, the written text with the oral with the oral tradition that was passed through the generations, the way it's quoted to us in the books of Mishnah and Talmud, which those books reveal to us, and the Midrash as well, they reveal to us uh, what's happening behind the scene. Um, so I'm taking you to the Gemara in Masechet Sota. Okay, the Gemara in Masechet Sota will we'll sit in two different places. Tanu Rabbanan. Wait, let me see the Yeah. Tanu Rabbanan. The sages taught. Keitzad avru Yisrael et Yarden. The sages gave us some information about Israel crossing the Jordan River. Bechol yom aron nosei achar shnei galim. Every day, meaning we used to, in our travels in the Midbar, in the wilderness of Sinai, that the Ark will travel behind the two flags of Judah and Reuven. And the Ark travels really in the midst of the Israeli camp. But now, on the day of crossing the Jordan, the Ark traveled in front. As it stated, behold, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth is passing before you. We just read this pasuk. So that's one thing. Another, another thing. On every day, on every other day, who's carrying the Levi, the, the ark? Is the Levim, the members of the family of Kehat, would carry the ark. But on this day, the Kohanim carries the ark, as it says. And when the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, again, the expression that repeats itself again and again, uh, they shall rest. Then the Jordan River. Uh, will stop flowing. So we have a very interesting thing here that it's not by coincidence that these two things were different on the 10th of Nisan, the day that we crossed the Jordan River, they were different than what we were accustomed throughout our uh, throughout all the journeys. You know, maybe not the first, the very first journey, but basically throughout all the journeys in the Midbar, in the wilderness of Sinai. Tana, it was taught in the Braita. Rabbi Yossi says, uh, in three different places, the priest carried the ark. So the Gemara, our sages, they know to tell us, by the way, you know, the, the, the ark, um, the ark was uh, um, in three different times in three different times, the Kohanim were carrying the Aron Abrit. I'm in the Shiur Navi now. In the Knesset, as I'm talking to you in the future, I'm in the middle And so, in three different places, the the Kohanim were carrying the Ark. And so we can learn something from those three times. The um, the the Kohanim carried the Ark when the Jewish people crossed the Jordan, as we just saw, when they uh, surrounded. Um, the city of Jericho, Yericho, as we, we will see in the next few uh, lessons, and when they returned it into its proper place, meaning the Beit HaMikdash, as being described in Melachim, the Book of Kings, uh, Book of Kings, Part 1, Chapter 8, Verse 6. That Beit HaMikdash that King Solomon built, the Kohanim were the one who placed the Ark, the Holy Ark of Covenant, into the Beit HaMikdash. So we, we understand, we understand here that the Ark going to its place, the Ark going to its place is being done by the Kohanim. Stage one in the Ark going to its place is crossing the Jordan River and bringing the Ark from wilderness, exile of Egypt. And I mean, we left Egypt, 
We build the ark in the wilderness. Uh, we are not in our place. The ark is not in its place. Stage one in bringing the ark to its place is crossing the Jordan River. The final act of bringing the ark to its place is, is when King Solomon builds, Shlomo HaMelech builds Beit HaMikdash, as described in the Book of Kings, and the ark is moving into the Kodesh HaKodashim, where the ark will be, uh, um, where, where the ark will be in the most uh, sanctified place that, that our nation have ever had. And so we understand here that there is an act of transformation. Living from the Midbar, the wilderness, into the land of Israel, it's not a same old, same old. There is an act of transformation here. There is transformation in the leadership by changing from Moshe to Yoshua. But this is just a reflection of the transformation in the leadership of the way that God, Hashem, leads Bnei Israel, leads the nation of Israel. That's the transformation. Everything else is just the outcome of that mega transformation that Hashem now is using a different tribute of leadership. What happened in the Midbar will be taught forever. Those lessons will live with us forever as the majority part of the Torah was us in the Midbar. But we are not in the Midbar anymore. We're not in exile anymore, wandering from place to place. The ark is getting to its permanent place. It's going to take time, but stage number one is crossing the river. Um, that change, that transformation, is not only in the change of leadership between Moshe to Joshua, to Joshua, but with the expressions that Joshua is repeating. First, the new expression, El Chai, the living God. And second, in this repeating phrase, Adon Kol Haaretz. Aron Adonai Adon Kol Haaretz. The master of the entire earth. There is a concept here of earthliness that did not exist before. And we will see it further down in, in the book of Joshua. The transformation, and again, it's not maybe the, the first time I'm pointing it, but we'll see it. It's, it's definitely one of those uh, lines that rhymes throughout the book of Joshua. We've been transformed from this miraculous leadership of getting bread from God's bakery to a, lead, to a leadership that eventually, it, it doesn't happen now, again, this is happening in stages, eventually we're going to get bread from our own bakeries. We are moving into the land of Israel, not in order to get heavenly bread, but in order to uh, uh, plow the fields in the, in the Israel Valley, and to plow the fields in the beautiful agricultural land and to sow them with seeds and harvest. The word harvest is mentioned in the cross. This is the time of the harvest. We're not harvesting yet, but we are moving into harvest mode, meaning it's time that we're going to work for our bread. 40 years we haven't worked for our bread. In Egypt, we haven't worked for our bread either. We worked as slaves. The bread and the work were not connected. In the Midbar, in the wilderness, the bread did not come as a result of work. So again, bread and work were not connected. Moving into Israel, very soon, bread and work are going to be connected. Farmer, wake up on time, go to your field, you know, have a be there before sunrise, then have a minion with the rest of the farmers, then go back to your field and probably work there until sunset. And so 
we are still going to see crazy miracles. But slowly but surely, those miracles are going to be transformed into the Adon Kol Haaretz, the master of the entire earth. Those miracles are going to be more earthly and less heavenly. Having the wheat uh, grows beautifully in your field, it's still a miracle of God. Being, having your field protected, having the rain comes in time, all those things are miracles of God. But those are earthly miracles. It is not man that being uh, delivered on a, a layer of frost straight to the opening of your tent. And so, before those miracles, heavenly miracles, are going to turn into earthly miracles, that we can already see it by the expressions, we're still witnessing crazy miracles. I'm continuing the Talmud in Masechet Sota. You can see it in the... Do you see my pointer on my screen? What was the height of the water? 12 miles by, by 12 miles, parallel to the size of the camp of the Jewish people who were passing through the Jordan. This statement is Rabbi Yehoshua. Rabbi Yehuda. There are other opinions. That's the easy opinion. There are other opinions. Maybe the water have gathered rose upon uh, uh, 300 miles. But they all agree until all the kings of the East and the West saw it. The kings, they can see this crazy miracle. The Jordan waters are piling up by the minimal opinion 12 miles high this is something that you can see this is something visible from many places any good king that has few scouts that are scouting around what's happening they come back pale as the wall shaking telling him hey who are those people crossing are these people or angels and so, um, this Jordan River and the Kohanim, it's happening for a reason. The ark traveling ahead, so the entire nation can see what? The entire nation, as we explained last class, we didn't cross in one line, one after another, but we cross as big groups. But doesn't matter how you cross, you end up, when you cross, you end up seeing the person in front of you. So it wasn't, oh, we we're following Joshua, everybody following Joshua. The distance that was placed between the people and the ark, even if we are standing in big groups and a bit of a mess and not in one line, everybody understands. We are crossing the Jordan River and going into Israel, after whom? after the ark. This is not crossing after Joshua. Joshua doesn't say to the Quran, you guys follow me. He's following the ark. This is moving into a leadership that whoever is your president, he follows the constitution. Moshe and the constitution was one. Moshe was the constitution. In a way. Torat Moshe. We say it. Torat Moshe. Moshe was a Navi that no one else can be. Not even Joshua. But the message that comes across to the people here. All of us are following the ark. And that's why the Kohanim are carrying the ark. Just like they will carry the ark into... Um, into the Beit HaMikdash in years to come. And again, we have to explain the, the middle, the, 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 the second time, which is by the war with Jericho. And we'll get to there and we'll, we'll see the explanation of exactly how, how it sits together with this explanation. But that's the message. The message is, we are one nation under God. Now, when Hashem is telling Yeshua, 
today I will start making your name great, just like I did for Moshe. When we compare the two stories, and that was kind of the homework I, I left you with last time, and then we'll move into the next chapter, which is the same unit. If you compare the stories of the crossing of the uh, Sea of Reeds, Yamsuf, and the crossing of the Jordan, there are similarities. But there is a major difference. Then the difference is exactly that. The point or the position of the leader. While Moshe Rabbeinu was the reason that, you know, he swing his staff and the sea opens, he swing the staff again and the sea closed. Here, it's not about Yoshua swinging his hands or his staff. It's about the ark. What's in the ark? What's in the ark, by the way? It's good to know the Talmud in a different place discusses exactly what's in the ark. But in the ark, as you all know, um, you know, definitely, beside a few other items that were in the ark, but, but everybody that discussed what's in the ark have to mention those three things. The tablets, remember the luchot? So both sets of luchot are in the ark. The broken luchot are in the ark, and the complete luchot, the second set of luchot, is in the ark, and the Sefer Torah that Moshe wrote. One Sefer Torah, the Moshe Rabbeinu Sefer Torah, is kept in the ark. And it's very clear here. Hashem says to Yeshua, I'm going to make your name great. If you compare the stories, it doesn't seem like, oh, just like I made Mo Moshe's name came out very great. He opened the sea and he closed the sea. Joshua doesn't open the Jordan. Joshua doesn't close the Jordan. Joshua's name becomes great as you are the leader who's chosen by God to follow our constitution. When the people finished crossing the Jordan, and Hashem says, take 12 people, each one for a tribe. Take those rocks that you carry before the Kohanim lives in the... And you should take those stones, take them with you. And Joshua called the 12 people that were prepared. Remember, these people were appointed before the crossing. And Joshua says, well, pass in front of the ark and take from the Jordan, take stones. For this to be a sign, when your children ask, what is the meaning of these stones to you? And you will tell them, oh, the waters of the Jordan were cut off because of the ark of the Lord of Hashem passing in the Jordan. And these stones will be uh, a memorial until forever. And they take those stones from the Jordan River. I want to point out another thing. Verse 9 it refers to a different set of stones. Joshua also set up, Joshua also set up 12 stones in the middle of the Jordan. At the spot where the feet of the Kohanim stood, they put 12 stones there. Now what's the point of these stones? What's going to happen with these stones? Uh, are these stones visible today? Or are they covered by water? So I guess it depends on the water level of the Jordan River. But these stones got covered with water the second that the Ark of Hashem left the, left the river. And the Jordan came back to function as a normal river. But this is the crossing point. Joshua wants to mark the crossing point. We have an issue with stones and crossing points. That issue starts, by the way, when Jacob is moving from inside from Israel to Chutzlaretz, and he sees the famous letter, etc., etc. What does Jacob do? He sets stones together. 
he set stones around his head and they the midrash they combined to be one stone and Yaakov sets a, um, a monument changing from Israel type of leadership to out of Israel as Jacob does and then changing back as happening right now demands a monument demands a point that we can say hey we understand that there is transformation and the Quranim are standing until everybody are crossing and what Hashem commanded Yoshua look at this very interesting phrase let's read verse number 10 again the priests the Quranim who bore the ark remained standing in the middle of the Jordan until this entire thing that was commanded that the Lord, Hashem, ordered Joshua had been carried out. You continue in the same pasuk that Moshe had commanded Joshua. Okay, Hashem commands Joshua. Yes. But we also have the words that Moshe commanded Joshua. We have a constitution. Moshe is the constitution. Our leader follows the constitution. The constitution is set. The five books of Moses were concluded the second we got to the Jordan River. The constitution now, it's sealed. We have here in one pasuk, Hashem commanded Joshua, Moshe commanded Joshua. There are no two commanders. Hashem is the commander. Hashem commanded Joshua, because Hashem speaks to Joshua, Joshua is a prophet. Joshua is obligated to what Hashem commanded him through the Torah of Moshe. The leader follows the Torah. is different than the leader is the Torah. You can see it again. It's the same unit. Chapter 3 and 4 are the same unit. So when the people finished, the Kohanim, they, they crossed as well. I want to I wanna Take you again to the Gemara in Masechet Sota. This was a crazy day. You know what? I'm sorry. Before the Gemara in Masechet Sota, we saw that Moshe commanded Yoshua. Where did Moshe command Yoshua? I'm taking you to Dvarim 27. Okay? Dvarim chapter 27, Perek Hafzain. Vaitzav Moshe. I'm taking you back to the book of Dvarim. ויצב משה וזקני ישראל את העם לאמור, סמור את כל המצווה אשר אנוכי מצווה אתכם היום. Keep everything I commanded you today. Remember, this is Moshe's final speech to the nation. והיה, now פסוק ב' refers to us. That's exactly where we are right now in the book of Joshua. והיה, and again I'm reading from the Varim right now. והיה ביום אשר תעברו את הירדן, and it should be at the day that you cross the Jordan River. That's where we are in Joshua. Into the land that your God, Hashem, is giving you. You should set up large stones, coat them with plaster. Next, Pasuk, Pasuk Gimel, verse 3. And you should inscribe upon them all the words of this teaching when you cross over to enter the land of Hashem your God is giving you, a land of flowing with milk and honey. As Hashem promised to your fathers, as Hashem, the God of your ancestors, promised you and promised your ancestors. When you cross the Jordan, you should set up these stones, where? Behar Eival, on Mount Eival. You should build a Mizbeach. And you should offer sacrifices. And you should write the words of Torah, whatever words of Torah, the curses, the blessings. You should write these, to these words of Torah on these stones. So we have an issue of stones. Moshe's commandment 
Hashem's commandment through Moshe, Moshe's speech. When you cross the Jordan, you take those rocks and you write the Torah and go to Mount Eval. Where is Mount Eval? Mount Eval is by Shechem. Mount Eval is one of the tallest mountains. It, today people call it in the West Bank. It's not the, in the West Bank of the Jordan. It's 80 kilometers far away from the Jordan, from where we crossed. This is a piece of land. It's a very tough road to drive even today. Driving from the Dead Sea, climbing up all the way to the area of Shechem, so you go north and west in the Jordan Valley. This is a hard ride. This is a hard, difficult ride. Let's see what our sages had to say about that. I mean, paragraph number two. Bore, look at this crazy day. Bore, come and see. Come and see how many miracles were performed on that day. This is Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai teaching, by the way. This is the Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's teaching. The Jewish people crossed the Jordan the same day. And the same day, they arrived at Mount Grizim and Mount Eval, which are more than 60 miles from the river. Not interrupted by any entity, by any nation, by any military force. No one could stand before them. Anyone who stood before them was immediately struck, banished, disappeared, had severe diarrhea, could not stand in front of them. On the same day, on the same day, they brought the stones and built an altar on Mount Eval and plastered it with plaster and wrote on the stones the words of the Torah in 70 languages and sacrificed offerings, ate and drank, said the blessings and the curses that are mentioned in Parashat Kitavo, few tribes on this mountain, few tribes on that mountain, took the stones apart and went back to the crossing point to spend the night at a place called Gilgal, which is not far away from Jericho. So if you think about that, this is, this is a lot of things to do in one day. Only a miracle, an absolute miracle by God can provide an entire nation not only to cross, as the water piling up, and everybody can see, no wonder that our enemies got diarrhea that day from fear and pressure and anxiety. Then take those huge stones, somehow carry them, climb, because it's uphill, that road up the Jordan Valley to the mountain area of Samaria to Mount Grizim and Mount Eval, to Shechem. Who came across to Shechem first time when he crossed into Israel? Our father Abraham. The very first stop when he crossed into the land of Israel, which was not the land of Israel yet, and the name Israel did not exist yet, was the land of Canaan. Abraham's first stop was Shechem. What does Avram do when he gets to Shechem? He builds a Mizbeach to Hashem. He builds a certain monument of stones. What do we do the first day we cross? Miraculously, we somehow carry huge stones. On that very day, by the miracle of Hashem, somehow we're walking and we can carry the stones and it's kind of like climbing Masada with the cable cart. That's how difficult it was. Right? There are two ways to climb Masada. Right? The hard way or the cable? I climbed Masada via the cable cart. That's easy. 
you know, 12 shekels and you save yourself the hike. And Bnei Israel are climbing into a very mountainous area. Har Eival is one of the tallest mountains. Putting plaster on the stones, writing the Torah, the Talmud says writing different verses, 70 languages, building a Mizbeach, sacrificing stuff, eating, drinking, making Lechaims, we have had time for Kiddush. Then taking the stones apart and going back to the Gilgal. What's the point? The point is to say we're not inventing the wheel. This land, we get it because of Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah. The promises were made to them. Those promises were cashed to us. So when you cross, by a miracle, I'll bring you to the first stop that you're first father ever to his first stop. That you'll know that you're coming into the land right now. It's not the first time your ancestors were already here. Right? It's kind of the same, by the way, us learning the Navi right now. You know, and we all love the state of Israel and celebrate Yom Atzmaut. But we say, hey, that's in the modern history. That's not our first time there. This is our homeland since Abraham. He was the first one that got a godly promise through Yitzchak and Jacob. Abraham built those stones when he came in. Jacob built stones when he left. You guys built stones when you came in. Moshe built stones on the east side of the river. It's brought in the book of Dvarim. Barvot Moab, the plains of Moab, to say, hey, that's the final destination of the Midbar. Now you'll be in an in-between a little bit and you cross. We build stones on the place coming in. We build stones in Mount Eval. Building stones. Stone, 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 stones. For a nation, which the second commandment on the tablets, on the Luchot, is don't make gods of stone, etc., etc. This is exactly it. We're transforming from the godly leadership to the earthly leadership. And the earth, you build it with stones. In the Midbar, in the wilderness, we were dwelling in clouds. Okay? Angels can dwell in clouds. But a real nation that will carry God's name in the world can't live in clouds. Must live in stone, in the house of stones. That's again a sign of moving into that earthly leadership, earthly tribute, still by the miracles of God. But eventually, you'll have to curve stones. Beit Hamikdash eventually will be built from stones. That's a whole different discussion, and it will, it will take time for Bnei Israel to move from a Mishkan which is a more of a temporary, you can take it apart and build it together, into set stones. It's still going to be a process. Um, let me share my screen again. Sorry. Um, okay. So we saw where Moshe commanded, it's in the book of Dvarim, Right after that, Vayavru Bnei Reuven Uvnei Gad V'chatsi Shebet HaMenashech HaMoshim Uvnei Bnei Israel Kasha Dibar Aleh Moshe Again, Moshe's deal with the two and a half tribes to go in front of the camp. Remember, they, the two and a half tribes wanted the land on the east side of the Jordan. Moshe told them, okay, but you guys will send your military men to join the conquest of the land. 40,000. Avru Lifna Adonai Lemilchama Laravot Yericho. So we see the words of Moshe are happening. Rather, if it's the deal he signed with the two and a half tribes, even though your land is already conquered, because it's in the east side of the Jordan, we are one nation. You will send forth your military men. And now we see, Bayomahu Gidal Adonai Yoshua Israel, Vayiru Otokasha Yeru Moshe Kolimechayav. 
on that day, Hashem exalted Joshua in the, in the sight of all Israel, so that they revered him all his days as they had revered Moshe. Understanding that he's just as powerful. But he's not Moshe. From now on, our leaders have to follow a constitution. Let the Kohanim go up from the Jordan River. Yoshua gives an order to the Kohanim. They uh, go out from the river and then the water of the Jordan uh, go back as they did uh, as they did before. The people mark it on your calendars. You sh everybody should commemorate the 10th of Nisan as the day that the, for the first time as a nation we've entered um, we've entered uh, to um, to the land of Israel um, east, the edge of the east side, east border of Jericho. And the 12 stones, we saw that miracle that happened. We're going back to the 12 stones that were set in the Gilgal. And Yoshua is telling Ibn Israel, Oh, your sons will ask you, your sons will ask their fathers, what is these stones? And you will tell them all about it. Does it ring a bell? It does. Because this verse, these same expressions of your sons will ask, repeats itself so many times in the Torah. For what story? The story of Pesach. How many times is in the Torah? Ki shalcha bincha, the whole Ela Seder is based on the fact that the kids are going to ask and you're going to tell the kids. Oh, that's what Hashem did. That's how Hashem took it. It's the same here. The story of Lela Seder and the story of the 10th of Nisan must go together. We left Mitzrayim in order to go into the land of Israel. At the tenth of Nisan, forty years later, you can't have one without the other. So those stones and that miracle of the Jordan River has to be something we talk about with our children. Hashem brought us into the land of Israel by miracles. Our destiny was the land of Israel. It's it's clearly it's evident from the Torah. Tell your children, here the Israelites crossed the Jordan on dry land, just like Hashem did at the Sea of Reeds. Here is the connection. And Lemandat Kolameha Aretz, thus all the people of the earth should know how mighty is the hand of Hashem. And you should fear Hashem, your God, always. And again, the message here is a message for a message to humanity, message for humanity. Just like the story of Exodus was a message for humanity. The story is being, now Exodus is being completed. The story of Exodus completes itself. Those expressions repeat themselves. Tell your son, for the nations to know. Ta -da. All those expressions are, it's a sandwich. Can't have just one part of the sandwich without the other. Unless you're saving on calories. And then it's not a sandwich. And so, this completes the story. The 10th of Nisan completes Lela Seder. And it's, it's something that we got to mark on our calendars. Hey guys, today's the 10th of Nisan. You know what happened to the 10th of Nisan? Jordan River got dry for us. We crossed into the land. Crazy things happened that day. Again, it connects to the very first statement Hashem gave us before we received the Torah. You should be my treasured nation, my kingship of, kingdom of Kohanim, to carry Hashem's name to the world. To carry Hashem's name to the world, you got to be an earthly nation that put together Shamayim and Aretz, heaven and earth together. If you just stay in Shemaim, if you just stay in the wilderness, surrounded by clouds and receiving bread, planet Earth can connect to you. Other humans can't learn from you because there's nothing for you and them. You don't have to work. You don't have to earn your bread. And they do. You are moving into an earthly 
tribute to carry God's name into the land. For the habitants of the land will know that Hashem is God and you are his chosen people. So that concludes that second unit of Sefer Yoshua. The, the point of I'll raise your name, I'll make your name great, and then that that will clarify that point for us. Just like I made Moshe's name great. And the people do, they reveal Yoshua, etc., etc. And the point of having this constitution right now, which is the Torah, and, and so Hashem commands Yoshua and Moshe commands Yoshua, brought in the same Pasuk. It's a crucial point. Every leader has to deal with challenges. Joshua's challenges are not the same as Moshe's challenges. The challenges in the Midbar are not the same as the challenges in Israel. Challenges in the, in the wilderness are not the same. What is the main challenge? Going into the land of Israel. Having 12 tribes establishing this country, this state. Okay. Similar, we can see with United States of America. You have different states. Imagine it's different tribes. Different states can forget that they are a United States. Again, not interfering with American politics. Oh, this, will the state of California disattach itself from the Union or the state of Texas? And obviously, I, I probably will never happen, but states can forget that they are part of a Union. Tribes can forget that they are part of a nation. We have our piece of land. Our business is our business. We are Shevet Yehuda, Shevet Shimon, their business is their business. Yoshua showing everybody, we are all united. Whoever the leader is, in whichever tribe the leader will be, we are united under the Torah. The leadership is the Ark. The leadership is the Sefer Torah that is in the Ark. The leadership is Adonai Eloi Kol Ares. This is the leadership. We are one nation because of one God and one Torah. It was very clear to the people in times of Yoshua, when we'll get eventually Bezat Hashem to the book of Judges, we'll see that that challenge it, it took its toll. And I, I don't know, it's their problem. It's not my problem. Even the state of Texas, and there's a drought in California. Yeah, I don't care. It's not my problem. Hashem doesn't want it to happen to the nation of Israel. That's what the word Am, 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 nation, 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 repeats itself so many times in these two chapters. Repeats itself so many times. Nation, 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 nation. In the wilderness, in the Midbar, it was clear to us we are a nation. Because we were all surrounded by the clouds. We were all getting heavenly bread. When you're moving from heavenly bread to earthly bread, that's when the challenge arises. Because hey, your bread is your bread. What happened in your field happened in your field. What happened in my field happened in my field. We got rain in the north part of Israel and less in the south. That means Shevetan has lots of uh, rain to their fields and what will Binyamin do? Heavenly bread, we all get the same. Earthly bread, it's uh, up to your cooperative right now. How is your kibbutz running? Your kibbutz is in debt. That doesn't mean anything about my kibbutz. And that's the main challenge. And that's the message Yoshua repeats again and again. Nation, nation, nation. That's why it's not about the leader crossing first. Because what happens if the leader is from Shevet Ephraim? What happens if the president is from Texas? And the next president is from California? Well, nothing, because they are all obligated to one constitution. And so Yoshua, that's exactly the message he's giving to the people. The fear is we can be just a bunch of tribes living on the same piece of land. No, no, no. we got to stay a unified nation, which that's the way it was throughout the times of Joshua.
that wasn't always the case after that time. I'll open the floor for some questions, if there are any. Rabbi, are these uh, Joshua classes posted, uh, re recorded and posted somewhere? Um, I want to say yes. They are recorded, so I'm sure they can be posted if they're not already posted. And uh, maybe we should have, uh, I'll verify tomorrow with uh, the office manager, with Kayla, and we have a link for the uh, past classes on the website, and then you can see the recording. Press the link and see the recording. Okay, great, because they're really, really good, and I'd like to watch them again. Thank you. All right. Well, to that, bye, everybody. Uh, we covered the first four chapters of Joshua. That's a big achievement. All right. Hopefully see you tomorrow in uh, Tuesday Torah Live. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.